well, it's been two weeks in a row of clean shows. Let's see if we can make it three in a fuck. Oh, god damn it, shit. This is Corey, and this is the Other Anthem Podcast. Good afternoon, Alliance. This is Rob, and it's out the window. I was going to say, we'll see how far we could make it, and clearly it was... Oh, I didn't start my timer. Less than 10 seconds. <laughs> Immediately. I didn't even have enough time to start the timer before we went back to normal, so... Say la vie. Anywho. <laughs> Here on out. Listen. Totally clean. All right. Listen. It's not a crutch. I don't need it. <laughs> Clearly, we can go episodes without it, but... I, uh... I just enjoy that as you scroll down, it's just explicit, 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 explicit. What's this? Click. <laughs> and I, I think it actually still says explicit. Oh, just because the podcast is Yeah, I think the, explicit? the podcast by nature is explicit, so... <laughs> by episode, we can't do yeah. it up. Sure, yeah, why not? I have uh, had the ability to tutor, had the opportunity to tutor some uh, high school kids, and I like I actually had one of them look at me and be like, "Why? Why am I learning this? When it? When do you ever use this?" And I just was like, "I'm going to tell you something. Somebody should have told me. You're not. Yeah. You're not going to use this ever. Shove it in your brain for the next six weeks, and then you can let it go." But you need to have it in there for the next six weeks. That's all. And that's a reality. It's a yeah. reality of the situation. Sorry. that's It sucks, but that's what you got to do. Shove it in there and then just let it go. Like I did with half of my law school. <laughs> <laughs> Phineas Babowski on the latest episode of Heretics. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I know you were there for it, but we never really... I was there for it. Uh, we never it really is- talked about... <laughs> Uh, the, my initial – I won't talk about – my reactions are uh, – were – it's weird because it's the kind of thing where like you've seen it so many times and by the end you're like, this is not – it's not funny. Why are we putting this out? Yeah. This is not funny. Let's scratch the whole thing. <laughs> Let's forget about it. And then uh, for those of you who follow us on our uh, – who are supporters on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash oh the anthem. It's a great way to support the podcast and you get early access to things. You, you got the email at 10 o'clock. Instead of the 5 o'clock that the rest of the world got to see it. And at approximately 10.05, I got a text message uh, from somebody. And they were just like, oh my god, hilarious. <laughs> uh, and so I'm like, okay, good. So it was funny. It was funny. I don't remember being funny because you hear the same jokes over and over again. And it, it just builds out. But the reaction thus far has been fantastic, I think. so. Yeah. So I'm hoping that uh, by the time this podcast is released... It's been shared a million times on Facebook. Right, yeah. So, we can... <laughs> so you want to make sure to Claire, share. Claire, and Claire don't, Day Jebs. <laughs> don't, uh... Listen, I'll, I'll do that character all day. I don't care. I just, <laughs> don't be shy. We'll have, a, we'll have a spin-off podcast if you want. Where just Phineas Wabowski. Yeah. Hello and good evening. <laughs> so, uh, don't be shy. Uh, check it out at uh, youtube.com forward slash o the anthem. It's available at ovtheanthem.com. Is it pinned at uh, on Facebook mm-hmm. or the anthem on Facebook? It's pinned at the top. You can't miss it. Share it around with everybody on all the social networks. Uh, make sure you share <laughs> it with, so everybody gets to experience the glory uh, that it is. And for everybody who has shared it already, thank you. Uh, thank you for your support. and glad you enjoy it. Now, uh, I have to say, we talked about it a little bit beforehand. We weren't predicting wins. No. We were just going with our heart. Right. Uh, we did not do well. Our hearts did not do well on the Tuesday election. Well, here's the thing that, uh, that I realized. We are smart and voters are stupid. God, are they dumb. Yeah. So uh, my assumption is this. Uh, our listeners are brilliant. Yeah. Um, but the rest of the voting public in the state of Maryland is not, yeah. unfortunately. Which means that more of them need to listen to the podcast, so... Right, so share let, it with your friends. Let people know. Whether Anybody who... Just, if, here. Here will be our new thing. Uh, I, I think I'll try and automate this somehow. Yeah. Anytime I see hashtag make America great again on Twitter, I'm just going to have it automatically reply with like, you seem dumb. Maybe you want to listen to this podcast again. <laughs> Get some intelligence. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so the best way that you can help us out with that is to share the podcast. It comes out every week on your RSS feed of choice, whether that's iTunes or Dogcatcher or Stitcher or Google Play now available there as well. We have a video on YouTube.com forward slash show the anthem. Share the shit out of that uh, and let other people 
bask in the glory that is the podcast yeah. and maybe get their intelligence level up a little bit <laughs> because, God damn, the results were sad this time. Mm-hmm. Upsetting. Uh, so what do you want to start? Which which of these abysmal races do you want to start with? Well, let's start with the mayors, I guess, because okay. that's... Uh... Let me, let me get to we the... We spent uh, a lot of uh, the last two weeks speaking specifically about the mayor's election. So, um, possibly the most disappointing part of this race isn't who won. Because I'm not... Uh, it, well, well, let's just start with this. The person who finished second in this race is a convicted... Not a convicted felon, but a convicted con- con- convict. Yeah. She's been convicted of a crime. Yeah. While holding the office that she is now seeking. Yeah. That would be Sheila Dixon. Who finished the race with forty? Uh, I'm sorry, with uh, 294 out of 296 precincts reporting. She finished with 34 percent of the vote and 42,484 votes. 42,000 people said she stole from the city. Yeah, she did a horrible job, and she pushed us further down back into the past. Mm-hmm. Sign me up again. Let's well. Do it. What people don't – people forget quickly about – not necessarily the gift card thing because that was everywhere. Right. But the – they they think about how Sheila like – you know, like when my son died, she came by and said hello. Right. And it's just like that'll – that kind of thing will stick with you forever and that's, that's Sheila's wheelhouse. Like well, she's the type of person who's like – who makes like that connection where you're just like, oh, I'm just going to stick with this person forever no matter what they do. And we did give we did give these mayors shit for not uh, following the example of the previous good mayors, but that's Schaefer all day. Yeah, the little things that you do one thing in one neighborhood, and everyone in the neighborhood will always vote for you because they're like, well, you know, Miss Clark down the block, her grandson got shot, and the mayor showed up. Yeah, and who else would I vote for? Right. Who else is going to come down into this neighborhood and do that? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Had when you committed the crime that yeah, sent you to maybe jail. not mayor, but and maybe not the mayor. <laughs> yeah, uh, but I, but people were so much like, and th- what this person said, and what I realized is they were like, so what? I know somebody who's been to jail. I know somebody who's been convicted. That doesn't make him a bad person. No, it doesn't. And her stealing gift cards doesn't make her a bad person. She was a really horrible mayor who also happened to steal some gift cards. Yeah. So I don't I didn't say not to vote for her just because of the gift cards. I said don't vote for her because she was a horrible mayor. Right. And she assumed that she was ascending to the mayorship, which she did. And then from there she was going to ascend to the next thing. And thank God we caught her with some gift cards so she didn't. <laughs> she ascended to the Baltimore City Correctional Facility. <laughs> Do you think she really spent any time in there? No, she got the walk out, the perp yeah. walk. Perp walk in, perp walk out, that was it. Yeah. So, um, central booking. I have spent more time in central booking than Sheila Dixon has, <laughs> and she's been convicted of a crime. Yeah. It's a damn shame. So, uh, the person who did win, however, was... Catherine Pugh. Catherine Pugh. Uh, State Senate minor- Majority Leader, Catherine mm. Pugh. And this is why I can't fault people for voting for her. She is a an establishment candidate. She is a long-lasting name in the city of Baltimore, and she's got political clout. It's a little sad she beat Miss Dixon by a little less than 3,000 votes. Yeah. A, a convicted or a convict, but, you know. That makes me question, if the ground game were better, how would you Yeah, win? yeah. And that's the what-ifs that the election, these kind of elections will eat at you, because it's like... We finished third of these two candidates, and if we had flaws in our campaign, if we had fixed those, what might have been? Uh, and just to round out, uh, David Warnock, uh, again, many thanks to Mr. Warnock for coming on the program, uh, finished in fourth with 10,000 votes. Uh, Carl Stokes, again, thank you to Mr. Stokes for being on the program, finished fifth with 4,245 votes. And... Uh, in uh, sixth position, uh, with three thousand and seventy-seven votes, DeRay. Unfortunately, yeah. so. And I, I do, uh, you know, I think part of DeRay's undoing was him getting into the campaign so late. And he did a lot of door knocking. He did a lot of footwork. I think, though, uh, in you know, I've been following. I mean, it seems like a, a well-organized campaign. It was well organized. It just, it just seems like it was like. You know, a little too late kind of thing, you know? And he addressed how, why he waited so long to get in and everything. And if ever, anybody wants to check that out, episode 107, we have an extended interview with him. And in fact, I think we're going to be posting the extended interview 
just by itself uh, as a spotlight episode. Uh, yep. Just so you can just find the uh, the extended episode by itself, but uh, or the interview by itself. I mean, we have Pew as basically the mayor elect now, right? Um, <laughs> well, the formality of the general election aside, <laughs> uh, because I will say that uh, in the Republican primary, former keep, keep, WBAL host. Keep in mind, though, Catherine Pew won the election. With 45,000 votes. Right. The top six vote getters all together, about 100,000 votes. The Republican candidate, Alan Walden. Yeah. Former. WBAL radio personality. BAL personality. Won the Republican primary with 2,871 votes. Yeah. The Republicans all together uh, had about 10,000 votes. Yeah. So. Here's what I'm saying, folks. When we say um, it's a formality, uh, jokes aside, that's a big vote difference. Yeah. Um, and I you could probably stab somebody and spit in a corpse's face and still win. She could shoot somebody. On, shoot somebody on Charles Street, and uh... <laughs> there will be plenty of time to get more into the idiosyncrasies of a of a Pew candidacy. Yeah. Um, but I would like to at least take the opportunity to do a quick note for the kids. Yeah. Don't quit. Because Pew has come up runner up in three straight mayoral elections. Right. She's run and come in second in the Democratic primary, mm-hmm. which is again, like I said, the race. <laughs> Basically. Um yeah. So, you know, you I, I have to imagine that after every single one of them you become disheartened to the idea of ever winning but right she kept pushing through and now she's gonna be mayor of baltimore so <laughs> she uh she, she put out the standard congratulatory you know like congratulations on being the next mayor Catherine pew i look forward to working with you you know and hopefully we can do things to extend my ideas into your campaign i would have loved it if pew just responded with like don't you put that evil on me <laughs> Just the picture, just yeah. the picture from yeah. uh, <laughs> just, from Talladega Nights. Yeah. Don't you put your, put that? Don't evil you on put me, that Bobby. evil on me, Bobby? Ricky Bring Bobby. Bobby. <laughs> well, Bye. talking about backups, yeah. Uh, can we talk about who might possibly be like fourth or fifth on the depth chart of like the Republican presidential? Because we could just, I, I would almost vote for Manziel over. <laughs> Ted I would, Cruz or I would, Trump? Or? Yeah, if, if you gave me the choice of Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, and Johnny Football, I'd have to think about it. <laughs> It'd be a compelling thought. All right, so uh, uh, going back to Maryland, because obviously we live in Maryland, yeah. and uh, it is what it is. Uh, disappointed in you voters for voting for Trump. Yes, very much so. Not surprised as much. Kasich, much to your prediction pulled out the second place finish mm-hmm. um with 23 percent not as much as i thought it would be um but you know well you know what i i think's happening right now there's there's like three factions of the republican party yeah and it's clearly identified with the three candidates that we have there's the like fuck them all let's burn it to the ground trump people <laughs> right yeah. there's the um my religious rights are being constantly violated with these transgender peoples in their bathrooms and their blah, 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 Ted Cruz people. Yeah. And then there's the, like, can we just go back to the way it was where it was so simple, where we just had small government? And, like, it was all local and not federal. And then yeah. that's John Kasich. And the, and black, then- the black sat in the back of the bus and they knew their damn place. I hear you socially this, acceptable racism. None of this Harriet Tubman on the $20 bill. <laughs> We keep Jackson there. We belong. Let's make it. And the Indians on the reservation. Let's That's make right. It. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you can soap you can sop up a lot of those trail of tears with some twenty dollar bills. Hashtag socially acceptable racism. <laughs> but, uh speaking of uh, Rawlings Blake and her wonderful legacy though, we have passed a auspicious anniversary uh this week in Baltimore. Um so uh, this in, sounds a lot like the Baltimore corner. It is the Baltimore corner where you get the straight dope. That's right. Uh, so <laughs> this week was the one year anniversary of the 
well, over the past few days. As, as you heard us talk about in episode 107, a lot of big anniversaries coming up in a row. And it's it's really the entire week, I suppose, it's the anniversary. But it's a few weeks ago would have been the anniversary of the incident and then Freddie Gray's death and then the protests start and then Wake and then Monday's uprising – And then that continued into the violence that continued for about a week. National Guard here, curfews, arrests, Joseph Kent getting kidnapped on national television, and Stephanie Rawlings Blake. Check my Twitter feed. Check my Twitter feed. Which, by the way, one year later, we still are contending that that video exists, and I just don't know where it is. Yeah, I've looked for it. It's it's out there. I think they're just they're they're sitting on it. Maybe that's what was on the flash drive. We'll get to that. So, uh, so the uh, you know, I gotta say, in a year where there were three hundred and forty four murders in the city of Baltimore, mm-hmm. there were far more than that officer involved shootings and incidents. One of them being Freddie Gray, but there were a lot more than just Freddie Gray. Um, I'm glad that the Baltimore Police Department celebrated, well, not celebrated, but commemorated the anniversary of that uprising by taking a moment and just. Letting cooler heads prevail in the city of Baltimore. Yeah, so uh, I'm sure you've heard the story, but a 13 year old child was shot by the police. Uh, I think this one is not as. Uh, if you're walking around with something that looks that much like a gun, mm-hmm. you're asking for trouble. Yeah, breaking laws, clearly. Well, I mean, isn't there some sort of statue against having a fake weapon that looks so close to a regular weapon? It was for sale in that he did no modifications to that weapon. Oh, really? Purchased it. Hmm. So, yeah. All right. <clears throat> well, still, you're you're asking for trouble when you're walking <laughs> around with something that looks like that. Those thugs out there asking for trouble. Yeah. Yep. Go ahead. I think that the police should have made more effort to uh, identify themselves and right. maybe try and, like, drop the gun or something like that as opposed to just going right to the shooting part. Right. Uh, and then I think it's pretty poor class to arrest his mother after the fact. Right. That was the part you left out of the initial story. Yeah. 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 But, uh, you know, it's – I feel like if this happens anywhere else, the story mm-hmm. – if this happened in in DC, there wouldn't be that much trouble associated with it. I think I think that it would have probably gone down more as like a you know like wow that's probably a, that's a that's a bad case of nobody wins. What you know? happened in Ohio last year, if you'll remember? Yeah, to me, a rice, a twelve year old boy, was shot, given no warnings by the Cleveland Police Department while holding a BB gun. Which apparently he said, well, no, the caller told the police it wasn't real. Yeah. So there's that. Yeah. Here's the problem, though. Do they have a trick, a quick trigger finger for everyone? Or is it just for young black males in the wrong part of town? Because if you're a young white male allegedly carrying an ex- high, a large amount of explosives... They let you hold a TV station hostage for a while, and then they allow you to walk out on the street, and they allow you to walk towards the police for a while before they shoot you. Also, they shoot you. But yeah, they, they still shot him. But they, so. took, they took a little bit of time, and yeah. what, what did they do? They said, take your hands out of your pockets, take your hands out of your pockets, let's see your hands, let's see your hands, let's well, see your I'm hands, sure, shoot. I'm sure if this 13-year-old was walking around with like a... a Hedgehog? Like a, you know, like a bomb, mm-hmm. like like he was Link and he's holding a lit bomb over his head. Right. I'm sure they're less likely to just start firing at him. You think? Or are they more likely to? Mm. Is it that the value of life is directly tied to the race of the child and the area where they are? I don't think it's tied to the race of the child. I think it is tied to the situation a bit. And then also, keep in mind this, just as an aside. Yeah. They shoot the kid the day before this other one happens. Yeah. So I'm sure at the roll call in the morning after a 13-year-old gets shot, they say, listen, 
no don't matter, shoot anybody no, today. No matter what you do, take a breath. Just don't go right into it. Because this looks really bad for us. So any situation that may occur today, or for the future, just calm down a little bit. Relax. If they only they had had that talk about take a breath the day before the 13-year-old got shot. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or Hindsight's twenty twenty, but the, Or... <sighs> A year ago, yeah. when this, when Freddie Gray happened, or when any of these officers were in training, to be seen. Luckily, this kid survived. Um, I'm Both surprised. Them. Yeah, well, uh, I'm like, I'm surprised there wasn't more of an uproar. Um, I was thinking maybe this weekend it was going to happen that people were going to like be like, okay, so by the way, he they shot that kid on Wednesday. Maybe we should go out in the streets. And I don't know if people are just like, you know what? Nothing's going to change. So it doesn't matter. What do we do? How about do your jobs? How about that? It, it's, it's, it's just frustrating that they continue to, to How about do not shoot want. anybody? Yeah. How about that? Let's not shoot anybody. Campaign zero. How about let's have zero police shootings? Or if you want to shoot something, shoot an email to Corey at OTheAnthem.com. <laughs> OTheAnthem.com. OTheAnthem on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, and the listener line. 443-219-7595. What's that number again? 443-219-7595. And you can find me on all your social networks at Robert and Cheek. Make sure you check out robertandcheek.com. There's links there to uh, my books, like The Movement, Insurrection. Uh, and links <laughs> which, to my... <laughs> which needs a thing to keep it up, but it's over there. <laughs> uh, links to my political bo- blog, foundingthefuture.us, where you can find out more political rantings like what you've heard today. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, you can find uh, a, a, a place to sign up for my mailing list as well where you'll hear other wonderful things like you <laughs> like you've heard today so uh make sure you check that out robert and all right well i think we've done good here today <laughs> we've done something i don't know if it's good fuck yeah <laughs> but make sure you do tune in next week for drinker to my O three less <laughs> politics more tequila <laughs> God, I wonder how how many how many people are going to nominate police as one of the words. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> uh, Rob no. going to be drunk. Yes, probably <laughs> so. Uh, but you've been listening to the O the Anthem podcast, part of the O the Anthem digital network. For Corey, this is Rob. Have a great week, everybody. Deuces. See y'all.